Hey guys, welcome to another video, and in today's video, I've got my native propel drive here, and I'm going to do maintenance on it so that we can make sure that we keep this propel drive functioning properly and smoothly so we can get out on the water. Coming up. Just get outside and do something awesome. All right, so what I wanted to show you all here is exactly how my drive sounded before I did the maintenance and after I did the maintenance before we get into the video. Um, at Lake Cumberland, the Wolf Creek Dam, and I'm gonna attempt to fish down here below the dam. All right, so I'm sure y'all could hear that. You've got some like creaking sounds and like a grinding gear sound. So let's get to what it sounded like after the maintenance. This is the first time having this drive out since I did the maintenance on it. And I can tell you right now, one is that it's so much smoother, I can tell. And then two, making sure that having those crank arms tightened all the way down it really helps reduce and eliminate any noise on this drive and it sounds so much better. So what I want to show you guys today is that anybody can do this. This isn't extremely hard. Um, I have went ahead and taken my drive apart just to test out taking it apart with these tools before I did this video for you guys, but I did not clean anything. So everything you're gonna to see today in the video is exactly how it looks after a year of use on my native Slayer Max Propel. And let's get into this. All right, so first we're just gonna start off. I've got my Propel drive here, straight off the old kayak. And then I've got my supplies sitting on the table in front of me. First off, I've got this spanner wrench here. Um, this I got this off Amazon and all this stuff is going to be linked below for you guys if you want to get this um, I have a pair of latex gloves and that's just to keep my hands from getting really greasy and nasty I've got a crank arm puller and I got that off Amazon also it's going to be linked down below that's so you can pull these crank arms off of this because it's a tapered um, mount on there and you have to have that puller to get that off all right, I've got a four millimeter Allen wrench. Um, your kayak should have came with one of these. That's the one that you use to put the prop on, um, but I'm not sure where it is. So I have this extra one um, from one of my tool kits. And then I've got an eight millimeter Allen wrench, and that's gonna be um, to take these bolts out of the crank. I have a, just a adjustable wrench here. All right, and the final part's gonna be some lube here. Um, I've got this uh, Frontier Silver 70. This is a heavy duty industrial grease. It's got Molly and Teflon in it, and it's supposed to be an excellent lubricant. Um, I got that off of a video where Mobbin Outdoors, who has a great YouTube channel, got his drive serviced at a dealer, and this was the lube that they used, and uh, that's what I'm gonna use today to make sure that we keep this drive smooth and wonderful for all those kayak adventures. So I am going to put on this DJI Osmo Action on the chesty mount and that's just to give you guys another perspective for some of these shots so I can kind of switch back and forth and hopefully give you guys the best description on how to do this so you all feel confident to do it at home. And just in case you're wondering, yes I'm in my bedroom um, where I have my computer set up um, just because it's cold outside, it's been really nasty, but hoping to go fishing tomorrow. So yes, it's like 11 o'clock at night and I'm doing my service on my drive so I can go fishing tomorrow. Might need some extra coffee in the morning, but let's get to it guys. So first I'm gonna take this eight millimeter Allen wrench and I'm gonna take off these crank arms. All right, so I'm just gonna put that down key and then I'm gonna use this. You can just break that loose. Once you break it loose, it's pretty easy to take out. So we'll go ahead and take that out. So we'll just sit that there. Let's do the other side here. So now, well, I need to probably I'll just go ahead and put these gloves on. Dr. Ryan, Dr. Ryan, please report to the ER. Dr. Ryan. 
All right, so I got my gloves on now to protect my hands from all this grease. And we're gonna use this crank arm puller on this. So what you're gonna do is, this has two pieces. It came with like a little wrench here, and then you've got the puller itself, so. All right, so I've got this crank arm puller here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely unscrew this here. Now I'm gonna throw this on. That way I can be able to use this little wrench to loosen the actual crank arm itself. Then I'll get it down to about there. Then I'm gonna just start threading this in to there. Once it stops, I'm gonna use this little wrench and I'm just gonna tighten it down righty tighty lefty loosey and what this does this pushes in and then it's going to push from that metal and pull this off so there's some tension She's on there, boys. It's getting easier. All right, I think that's about it. So now I can do this. Just start taking the core off. And as you can see, that whole assembly comes off there and then I can just unscrew this and do the other side. Now one thing to note is, is that whenever I did have these on here before, um, they were kind of loose. Um, so I was getting some noise out of my drive and the reason why was because I didn't tighten these down enough whenever I had them on there. So let's do the other one. Do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and screw that in. We're going to start tightening down the silver piece. There we go. Alright, so I got both my crank arms off. Cool thing is, is these still have the uh, left and right stickers on them so it's easy to know which is which. All right, now we're gonna get to the spanner wrench. So I'm gonna open this up fresh off of Amazon. So this one here, you've got the actual spanner wrench itself but then it comes with these different sized attachments here that are the attachments that go in there and this one is a number seven is what it says and that seems to be the right size for those holes on that so I'm gonna go ahead and screw in the number seven one into this wrench so there's two sides to this this side does not have the screw hole for lubing it if you look at this side it has that allen key there to where you can actually take it loose and lubricate this with everything on so the one with this side i'm going to keep on and we're just going to set that there and then i'm going to take this span wrench and since we're going to be loosening it loosening it i'm going to push down this way so i'm going to set up put this all the way in those holes there and you want to make sure it stays all the way seated in there now I'm just going to push down. It's breaking loose. All right. There we go. Let me go ahead and get that off there. And it's going to come completely off. And looky there. So that's what it looks like. So you can tell there's not a ton of grease on there from the factory. Um, let's get that wiped off. 
and try to clean all this off. Now you could, I would actually prefer to use shop towels, but I don't have any sitting around. But what I want to try to do is just get all this old grease off here. Um, you could use like a old toothbrush. Obviously you don't want to get it wet, but it's not a huge deal if some of that grease is still on there. But you just want to try to get it as clean as possible. You just don't want a bunch of that old grease. And if you can tell, like mine looks in pretty good shape here but you don't want to leave little pieces of paper towel and that's one advantage to those shop towels is they don't have all that stuff on them. Alright so I went and got my toothbrush, an old toothbrush here and I'm just going to try to get all that old grease and stuff out of there and you just want to be careful with this because that is your rubber o-ring seal on there. Um, one common problem that people have had is this lock nut right here loosening up um, mine is really tight but you can order a second one of those from native and then you can actually put two of them on there and that'll keep that from backing off but I'm not having that issue um, and unfortunately I got online to get one of those and the parts were on back order so I might do that at another time but looking at all my teeth here everything looks ship shape I am gonna go ahead and sit the drive kind of on its side here and do the same thing to the little pinion shaft here and spin my prop a little bit try to get all the way around it so now I've got my silver 70 lube and on the end of it I can just take this little cap off and then I'm just going to you know, you know, really scientifically, I'm going to take this and put it on my finger. This is really tacky and sticky. I'll tell you that much. A little bit of this lube. You don't need a ton, guys. You don't need to slather it on here. It is super sticky. It's almost like a, it's almost gummy. I need to move some better light over here, guys. There we go. So look at how sticky and gummy that is. There we go. So, main thing is, as you run this, it is going to get it is going to get down those grooves, and it will work itself down in there. I guess I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. Now I'm going to do the same thing to that pinion shaft that's in the actual drive itself. Obviously this one's down in the drive here so I'm just going to put a little bit of that on there. Try to wipe it around the sides. Wipe it around the sides. There we go. And you can actually see that's that little access hole right there. So. Um, you ever just wanted to put grease on it while it was in the actual kayak um, or if you didn't want to do this full like take apart and stuff you could actually just stick the gun in there but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this back on so I'm going to slide this down in there carefully so as I'm tightening this up into these threads what I want to do is you don't want that to you don't want that to bind up so I'm gonna kind of spin the prop as I'm tightening it I'm gonna have to use the spanner wrench now and once it hits you'll fill it because it'll start spinning and you'll feel it engage those gears. You just don't want those gears to end up not meshing correctly. There we go. Almost there. There we go. Now, if you see, like when you go to tighten this down, see how this side has no gap? And this side does. You want to tighten it down to where there's no gap. 
Alright. That's all we tightened down there. Now I can get to putting my crank arms back on. So, go ahead and put them back on. There's that one. That's the right side. We'll go ahead and put that screw in there, that bolt, just to hold it. Then you got this side. We'll put that one in. Now that I got those pretty much started, I'm going to tighten it down with this Allen key. So I'm going to put this side in first, then tighten that down. All right, so in the guide, it does tell you to tighten these down to 25 foot pounds. Um, I do have a torque wrench, and I might check these later. But you just, the main thing is you just want to make sure that they're not loose. Um, if they're loose, it'll make your drive creak and make funny sounds, which is actually a problem that I was having with mine because mine were not tight enough. I didn't tighten them up. When I got the kayak, I was so excited that I did not tighten them all the way down correctly, and I was getting a noise out of my drive, and that was my bad. So we'll do the other side. And we're just going to use we're going to brace with this crank arm and just push all right so that's it for the top part now we are going to move on to the bottom where the propeller is all right so down here we're going to start with taking off the propeller so i'm just going to use this uh four millimeter i think is what size this is allen key and we're going to back that out All right, so back that out. I didn't want to leave that Allen bolt in there. That way we don't lose it. All right, so here you have your shear pin. And what that's meant to do is if you hit something like really hard, it's supposed to break that before you'll have a mechanical failure inside your drive because you don't want to shear off gears or something like that inside your drive. This is a purposeful point of failure in case you really bind up your drive. So here we're going to need our spanner wrench again, um, but these ones are these little holes are actually smaller. So I'm going to try these out, see which one fits. So it's going to be that one, and this one is a looks like a six. So we're going to switch those out. So yes, you can buy one of these spanner wrenches that's pre-set up from Burley Pro and it comes like pre-spaced out, like one end has the correct um, size of these for the top and then the other side has the same thing on the other. I'll try to flash up a picture of it, but I got this one. It actually says something about being used for Toyotas and I do like to do all my own mechanical work and I didn't think the tool was that expensive. So I chose to just go ahead and try it out and I did so I just so I just chose to go ahead and buy this little kit and keep it for my own use so let's get this loosened All right, that's not too bad I've heard that some of these really bind up so let's And this is the 701 series drive, so we have that integrated weed guard. And what I want to do here is just look at this. Once again, I've not had any water intrusion, intrusion or anything. Everything looks good. Um, we're just going to clean that off. Let's uh, take a look, see down inside the drive here. I don't know if I'm going to really be able to see it very well. All right, so. If you look down in there, that's the teeth for the gear that comes from the top. And it looks in really good shape. Um, it's looking in really good shape just like this one. So we're just going to clean those off, apply a little bit of grease to both of those, and we'll be able to put this back together. So I'm just going to use my toothbrush again. And I'm just trying to clean off some of this grease. And I can use the wheels up here to spin this around. 
All right, so let's get this wiped off here. I'm gonna try and clean that off. All that old nasty grease. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little toothbrush because this goes down in pretty far here. So I'm gonna take this toothbrush, get some of this grease on here, and I'm just gonna apply it using this. So we're gonna put a little, use my finger again, and we're just gonna put a little of this new grease on that. Here we go. I'm gonna wipe my finger off kind of really fast. And then we're gonna just get that back in there. All right, so we're gonna get this back in here. We're gonna put everything back together. So let's slide this in. And we're just gonna make sure that we're threaded right here. I do wanna make sure that there is a seal right here. We just wanna make sure that's in good condition too while we have this open, everything look good. I didn't have any water intrusion. So that seal is good. And we're just gonna tighten this back down. Kind of the same thing. Spin this. I'm gonna, as I'm tightening this down, I'm just gonna kind of wiggle the wheels back and forth so those gears mesh together until you got them started meshing together now. We just wanna make sure everything is good. There we go. So everything's meshed together good. We're just gonna get everything tightened back down. Use our spanner wrench again. You do not want to over tighten this. We're just gonna give it a little bit of a twist to make sure that it's tight in there. There we go. We're just doing everything backwards, guys. So we're gonna take, all right, you look on the back of your prop here, you've got a little cut out there for where that pin goes. So we just wanna line that up. You'll feel it kind of click in. You'll feel it kind of click in whenever you do that. And then we're just going to tighten this Allen key back down or this Allen bolt. All right, folks, and that's it. Let's give it a test. It feels really good, guys. That's I can tell that's a lot smoother. I can tell you that right now. It sounds a lot better. All right, guys, so that's it as far as doing the primary maintenance on this. Now, if you do have some really bad conditions when you get inside there, you might have to... You might have to research some other parts and stuff. You might have to take this bottom housing off and the top off, but for most 99% of people, that's all you gotta do. So guys, hopefully if you guys are intimidated by doing your own maintenance on your propel drive, hopefully this video gives you the confidence to know you can do it. You can do it at your house. It's not a big deal. I mean, you know, maybe even, as, especially if I wasn't filming this, that maybe would have taken, even getting all the tools together, 20 minutes to do that. And uh, now I know that I can use my drive. So what I am gonna do in the future is try to do this about every six months or so. But this uh, Frontier Silver 70 is a very high performance industrial lubricant grease um, with Teflon and stuff in it. So they actually use this on like dozers and like industrial equipment. So. When you compare industrial equipment to this little propel drive, you know that this lube is going to last. And guys, if you're if you're looking at tackling this project by yourself, all the tools that I've used today are going to be linked in the description below, or they came with your kayak, like this big eight millimeter Allen wrench. Um, that way that you can do all this on your own at home. And I appreciate every single one of you guys and all your support on my channel. And uh, this 701 series drive, I'm really impressed with how good it looked inside. I have used the crap out of this thing and I have used and abused my kayak. And like I said at the beginning of the video, Native recommended that within the first six months of having your kayak that you're supposed to service it. I didn't see that, but it's been a year and this thing is great. So that's a testament to Native and their you know, dedication to having a quality product for us kayak fishermen and kayakers out there. As always guys, 
get outside, do something awesome, and take somebody with you if you get a chance. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you have any questions about this, please comment below and I will try to answer every single question that I can. Thank you guys.